What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery and today I want to talk about a historical event that happened. Well, maybe, maybe historical to everybody else, but to me it's pretty significant for people who are into this type of thing. There was an auction I believe, uh, yesterday actually. They had it, actually, actually I saw it on um, Instagram Live. There was an auction at the Phillips Auction House where a Rolex Daytona watch or timepiece who, who that was owned by Paul Newman, which was Paul Newman for those who don't know, was a movie star and a race car driver, right? Yes, you can see a lot of his um, live because you can see his face on like you go to the grocery store, you see his face on like like sauces and stuff like that. Yeah, Paul Newman. Anyway, yesterday there was an auction for one of his watches, one of his. Uh, timepieces, one of the most famous ones, and yesterday it broke a record. I'm gonna read it to you. All right, this is just from the um, you can find you find all over, but if you type in Paul Newman watch, it'll pop up like all over the place, and this is from the Maxim uh, uh site. It says Paul Newman's Rolex Daytona just became the most expensive watch ever sold the most expensive watch ever sold it happened yesterday I actually so actually had it I went on, on Instagram live you look at it go to their page and have their little live they actually showed the auction live I saw the auction it was, it was crazy anyway let's see the most expensive wristwatch ever sold at auction a Rolex Daytona owned by legendary movie star and avid race car driver Paul Newman just smashed records with a $17,752,500 sale at a Phillips auction. Okay. The bidding war started at $10 million and lasted a mere 12 seconds. I'm going to read, read the rest and I'm going to break that down to you. There was a ton of interest in this classic timepiece, which steamrolled the previous world record holder, the stainless steel Patek, um, Patek Philippe, that went for a mere, mere, eleven million dollar, eleven million one hundred thirty-six thousand six hundred forty-two dollars. So that was the previous record. Paul Newman obliterated that record. Let's see, the significance of this watch cannot be overstated. Rolex had had been making, yeah, that's true. Rolex had been making the auto racing inspired timepiece since 1963, but it became widely popular amongst collectors when Newman started rocking it. <laughs> actually, put rocking it. I can't believe they actually put that in. Started rocking it after first getting behind the wheel in 1969. So pretty much when he when he became a race car driver, and he had that watch on, it pretty much put it on the map. For those who don't know, this is what the watch looks like. That's the watch right there. The Paul Newman watch. There you go right there. <sighs> Crazy. It don't, it's on fly though. I ain't gonna front. It's fly. Some, for, some forget that the star of The Hustler, The Color of Money, and Cool Hand Luke, I remember Cool Hand Luke, does this in some of the movies he played in, had a decorated second career as a four time national holding race car driver. National title holding race car driver. Newman even placed second in the 24-hour Le Mans endurance race in 1979. Dude was straight up legend. It's just talking about, just talking about the, the backstory of him and you know, his his fame and all that stuff. So anyway. Let's see if there be some more of this. And it says Phillips, which is the uh, Phillips auction. Phillips. The storied auction house that hold that sold the watch called Newman's signature Rolex Daytona, arguably the most iconic collector's wristwatch of the 20th century. In a statement, I can't blame him for that. The thing is, it is fly. Not gonna front, it is fly. Anyway, that's basically the gist of the auction. But what's crazy is the 12, the auction lasted 12 seconds. I'm not not kidding this. Most of the most of the auction when you look at the auction, if you go to, to the Phillips um go on go on Instagram, right? 
And if you were to go on to the Phillips page, Philip Auctions page, right? And they have the little, they still, I think they still have the, they still have the little, just the feed up there where you can press it and watch the auction. Most of the talk, most of the, the event was actually just the auctioneer talking, just describing the watch and the history and so forth and so on. But the actual auction itself was short, like I said, 12 seconds. It started, it started, it started at 10 million, which was a million and some change below the previous record. Right? It started the bid started at 10 million. And in 12 seconds, it jumped from 10 million to 17 million seven hundred fifty-two thousand five hundred dollars in 12 seconds. I don't think I understand what that's what I'm talking about. 12 seconds, it jumped over seven million dollars. Way over seven million dollars. Seven it jumped over seven point seven million dollars in twelve seconds. That's crazy. That's 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 nuts. That's just it's nuts. It's 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 it's, 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 it's crazy. Like, and people may think, well, what's so significant about a watch and stuff? Like, well, here's the thing. Watches are you know watches, certain cars. Um, these things become assets. These things become valuable mainly because of the people that owned it. Like when someone says this watch belonged to Paul Newman. Now, because of who Paul Newman was, because of his legacy, anything attached to Paul Newman gains an incredible amount of significance and prestige. It's like saying like this is the White House. The White House isn't significant because it's a big white house. There are plenty of big white houses. Okay, the White House is significant one because it's a home, so it's an asset. It's it's a home, and two because of the people that dwell within that house, mainly the President of the United States. Because like there there are houses that are larger than the White House. There 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 are big there are, there are White Houses that are larger than the the White House. But it's called the White House because of the prestige of the events. Though the the president of the United States lives there, okay, that that's what it is. The president of the United States lives there. So the same thing with um, a piece of jewelry. You know, the these earrings were worn by Elizabeth Taylor, given to her by her fifth husband, or something. I don't know. And because of the status of Elizabeth Taylor, it it, it adds on a certain level of popularity. It's popularity by so you know, I say, you know how people say guilty by association. We also have popularity by association. If you or anything you own is associated with someone or something or some great event, that thing becomes greater. It, it adds on. It's the historical value is added on to the piece. I mean, plus the mechanics of the watch. I mean, you have you have certain watches that have certain mechanics that are just you know that you, that you won't find everywhere, and that adds value to it because it's rare that you will find a watch that has a certain kind of mechanic. But when you add that on to the person who owned the watch. Paul Newman's like Paul the name Paul Newman is heavy in the entertainment field. If if you like if you go through you know, the like Hollywood and all that stuff and you mention Paul Newman, there's a good chance you're gonna get a great deal of attention when you mention Paul Newman in the entertainment circles. Plus, he was a race car driver. So if you mention Paul Newman in race car, like in NASCAR, excuse me, there's a good chance you'll get another form of attention. So a movie star slash race car driver, kind of like an all-around all renaissance man of the time. You know, he he did, he was into everything. He did a he movie star, you know, 
collect art and collect the watches and stuff like that. He was he was that dude. He was the Paul Newman was the Brad Pitt or the Tom Cruise or the Denzel Washington of like the sixties. Like the way people see Tom Cruise and you know Denzel Washington and all them and Will Smith, the way the way people, the way people see him them now, Paul Newman was that guy in the sixties and the seventies. He was that dude. So anything associated with someone who is that dude will gain a level of prestige. Will get a upgrade and uplift, right? So when he when his watch goes on auction yesterday, in twelve seconds, in twelve seconds, it went from ten million because it started at ten million and jumped to seventeen million seven hundred fifty two thousand. Five hundred dollars. Can you imagine a watch going for for close to, I'll say, eighteen million dollars? Just think about that. A watch that you put on your wrist, going for, so, you no, know, be be careful about you know be careful about the things you you give up the the things you just give away because those things could have value and you never know how your life's going to turn out. And then, you know, the things that you own can have a level of prestige, you know, and become a great asset. It happens. Right? So, just want to drop that on y'all. Thank you all for listening. It's crazy. Oh, I I saw, I, I'm telling you, I saw the auction on Instagram. I saw it. I wish I was there in person just to get the feel. I want to get the feel for that. But, anyway. Thank you all for watching this uh, video. Leave a comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. I will catch you all later. Peace.